Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is James R. Ely, CEO and founder of Ely Electrical Contractors, LLC. James, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Ah, this is a pleasure. Um, you know, I am really excited to have you here. Uh, before we started the cameras rolling, mm -hmm. you were sharing some of your stories, and you've got a lot of significant stories. Yes, I um, do. And I want to start at the beginning. We probably are going to run out of time. Mm -hmm. But starting at the beginning, what were some moments that sort of put you on the path to entrepreneurship, even if you didn't know it early on? I know I didn't know it. it mm -hmm. At 12 years old, my stepfather started to take me along with him. Uh, he was an independent electrical contractor. I used to go along with him on Saturdays, and I wanted to be out and play with my friends and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. But uh, I had to go every Saturday with them. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. <laughs> and then around the time I got 18 year old, years old, I really started to like ele the electrical field. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started thinking more about eventually one day having a business doing wow. this. It was something that was innate in me to have an electrical business. Why, I don't know. It just mm -hmm. hit me at 18. Okay. And then when it came time to go to Howard University, I said to my mother I wasn't going. She was what? pretty upset. I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. And I <laughs> started a business not really knowing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't start it the legal way <clears throat> mm -hmm. and what have you, uh, uh, and forming it with it incorporated and all that. I was a young man. Mm -hmm. So I just had friends, I had neighbors, and I started doing electrical work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I married at 21. And I said, oh, well, I think I need to take a, a job <laughs> with someone else. And I did, right. but I still had that burning desire. It was still in the electrical field. And then by the time I was 28 years old, I actually turned it into a full-blown company. Well, let's, let's go back to that moment, mm -hmm. turning it into a full-blown company. Were you a solo entrepreneur? Were you doing all the wiring yourself? Or did yes. you have a crew? I was a okay. sole proprietor, which okay. is what's called when usually when you're independent and you have mm -hmm. an incorporated or an mm -hmm. LLC or what have you. And I did all the work myself. Okay. I would take the ladder down the alley, throw it over fences, put up 100 amp services and this, that, and the other. And my stepfather kept saying to me, you need to bring somebody along with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you ever get hurt out in the field or what have you, you're right. out there all alone. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, I got hurt out in the field. I was up on a ladder tying in a service, and I was taking the old service loose, and I had my hand on Pico lines, and the old service caught on fire, and it came down the line and burnt through my, went through my fingers and burnt my hand. Wow. Intense Do you still pain. have that scar? Luckily, I healed very well. Okay, okay. Uh, and I had to call my stepfather. He had to come mm -hmm. and finish the job. It went well into, like, midnight for him to get the lights back on in people's houses and what have you. And he said, now do you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. then from that point on, I hired my cousin. Okay, okay. He family worked, business. Family business. <laughs> and uh, he continued to work. For, he worked for me, and we worked well into um, uh, 2000, what was it, nineteen eighty. 89. Mm -hmm. uh, and by that time, I had five guys working for me. I was doing a very large job up in Reading, Pennsylvania for the Reading Railroad, uh, uh, well, what, what was the Reading Railroad mm -hmm. Company, a very large building. We were putting in a service, mm -hmm. this, that, that, and the other. And then the recession came. No. Yes. <laughs> and I wasn't paid. Uh, I went to my lawyer and I said, what do I do? He said, walk away because you're standing in line Along mm -hmm. with everyone else, you'll get pennies on the dollar, and you'll pay me more mm -hmm. than you will receive from mm -hmm. what's left on your contract. He said, just walk away. Wow, that's a lesson. That, well, that was a big lesson yeah. because what it was, yeah. it was with someone I, I'd known, and as they grew, I grew. I went from wiring one house to them to doing commercial buildings. Mm -hmm. And at, at, at that time when that happened, um, he, the business, his business was cash poor, okay. so couldn't pay me. Okay. So I was out of business, had a wife, three kids. Uh, the recession had came. Everybody was out of business who was in the trades. Mm -hmm. uh, supply houses were closing mm -hmm. because at that time, sure. supply houses carried your line of credit. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't pay the supply house, they couldn't pay their manufacturers, and they were going out of business. It was mm -hmm. really horrible. Mm -hmm. So sort of a domino effect. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. a friend of mine one day saw me in a supply house, and he said, are you still into that electrical contracting business. And I was like, no, I need a job. Okay. He said, I could probably get you down to the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That was January of 90. Mm -hmm. uh, through uh, a few tests and so on and interviews and what have you, he finally hired me in November 1991. 
and I went to work with the uh, University of Pennsylvania, but still maintained Ely Electrical Contractors okay. in some form or fashion. Okay. Um, we grew again mm -hmm. in 1985. Um, took on another five, six employees. Mm -hmm. uh, that was around the time when um, what was happening, the residential boom was going mm -hmm. on and what have sure, you. Sure. Uh, people houses were being um, uh, had increased in value and a lot of people mm -hmm. were taking equity and rewiring mm -hmm. houses, especially in University City area where they had these four stories, 4,000, 4,500 square foot houses. Mm -hmm. And we were rewiring these houses for about $30,000 a house. Mm, so okay. we're rolling along okay. again. We Cash got a, is coming right, in. We got okay. a contract with Time Warner before Comcast took them over, putting power mm -hmm. pole, putting power supplies up on telephone poles. We were doing pretty good. Okay, sounds like a roller coaster. Some, some, some <laughs> yeah, yeah, are going yeah, yeah. up. Shoot, about shoot, to shoot, shoot, shoot. What's going to happen next? What happened was pretty much the stock market almost crashed in October mm -hmm. of 2008. Mm -hmm. And we were busy finishing up a multi-use building, and so we were busy, and I wasn't paying attention to the fact the phones weren't ringing. And then when that job oh, started to come oh. to an end, I realized, whoa, we're not getting any more calls. Mm -hmm. What's going on? The phone literally stopped mm -hmm. ringing. Mm -hmm. And from 2008 to January 2013, I was in survival mode. But luckily, I had the position at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in December, I started to negotiate a contract with the Nara Square Civic Association. Mm -hmm. Familiar with them? Uh, mm -hmm. To do a project for them. They were converting a old uh, uh, building into an office building. Mm -hmm. We won that contract. It was 300 and something thousand dollars. I'm coming out of the recession. I have a credit score of like 425. Okay. No now you're money. putting your, all your business out there. So uh, well, you're, you're I, I'm, I'm okay. proud to say how okay. Uh, okay. through sheer will. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to move this forward. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they said we needed a bond. I never had a bond before. And you usually mm -hmm. can't get a bond with right. a credit score like okay. that. I uh, worked with a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jerry Valerie in Philadelphia, and, and uh, he guided us through that process. Then I was introduced to Marla Hamilton at PIDC. They, I know Marla, right? They, they yeah. allowed us our first funding of $100,000. So at Penn, uh, every Christmas break, the whole school, shuts down. Mm -hmm. So I came back on January 2nd mm -hmm. and I told them I was retired, retiring. I left at January 7th. Mm -hmm. I was the fastest employee at University of Pennsylvania to ever retire. <laughs> wow. My mother thought I was taking on a risk, but I had already been there 21 years. I was able to retire and uh, I always wanted to do this at a larger volume, a larger size. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I take sometimes may not be a calculated risk but I take risk that's how mm -hmm. that, that's the entrepreneur mm -hmm. he takes risks and he finds a way to make it happen wow and Great from that story. point on it just then we went into um, the summer Greg had mm -hmm. this project Greg Reeves had mm -hmm. this project we we won it mm -hmm. um, but he said you had to be signatory with 98 Mm -hmm. I went in with my general counsel. We sat down. They allowed us to come into the union. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that point, it just kept growing. And uh, we're still growing. Great, uh, great. Uh, we hope next three to five years uh, doing at least $20 million or more in business, which is not very, it sounds like a lot, but it's not very difficult mm -hmm. in the construction mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. especially when you're doing commercial union work. Right, right. Because of your, your overhead and what mm -hmm. you carry and, mm -hmm. and labor and what have mm -hmm. you. But still, it's a nice, significant amount. Right. right. Well, th that's what we're about. This right. is Significant TV, and that's a really powerful story. Yeah, um, the ups, the downs, the, the personal, the family. Um, what are you most proud of, I mean, given that journey? What I'm most proud of is um, I, 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 I'm going through what I go through, and I think back to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandmother had a saying she used to say to me when I was very young, two things. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about things you have no control over. Mm -hmm. That helped me deal with the stress of business going bad. I had no control over it, right. but it was still stressful, so sure. I have to figure a way to make it work. And she said, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. And those two things are over my desk, and they've been there forever. My grandmother passed about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. um, and she pretty much raised me mm -hmm. along with my mother. And she was a, a large impact, had a large impact on my life about just mm -hmm. always thinking positive, always thinking the positives out of a negative and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it's really worked for me. Yes. And also, I love what I do. 
Okay. Uh, in 20, 2013, uh, I have a 15-year-old daughter. She's 15 now. She mm -hmm. goes to William Penn Charter. Mm -hmm. And we're always having conversations. And we're riding down um, City Line Avenue. And they were building, a, a, I think it was a BBT bank, mm -hmm. BMT yes. bank. Mm -hmm. And it was coming up out of the ground, mm -hmm. which means you had the, uh, the metal coming up and steel girders mm -hmm. and this, that. No, and I said to my daughter, that's eventually what I want to do. I want mm -hmm. to really get my hands into construction wow. like that. Okay. Six months later, I was doing ground up with a shopping center at 7th and Lehigh. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've done a 42-unit apartment building. Uh, we've done work for Lower Marion School District. Mm -hmm. um, we've been busy. Okay. We've been busy. So you believe it, and, and you're working on it. achieving it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. And I, you have to love what you do. If you mm -hmm. don't love, you go out and you'll see a lot of guys that have construction companies, and they mm -hmm. just look broken mm -hmm. because this is a hard industry, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of ups and downs. You wait anywhere from 90 days. Everybody say they're going to pay you in 30 to 45 days. Forget it. <laughs> You're paid in 90 <laughs> to 120 days. Right. And you have to carry that burden at, at mm -hmm. that. And you have families and this, that, and mm -hmm. it's very hard. It beats mm -hmm. a lot of guys down. Mm -hmm. But I just have this thing about me that I believe I'll, I'll make it. Mm -hmm. And I've made it so far. Okay. I don't know how much farther I'm going to go, <laughs> but I believe, uh, uh, you know, I can go as far as I want to go. And especially as being a minority. Mm -hmm. Because there aren't too many minority contractors that are in the union mm -hmm. that are operating at the level that we are. Okay. And okay. with all the work going on and the mm -hmm. funding from the city and tax breaks and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, these other large general contractors have to have inclusion. They have to you know, right. do the 20%, right. the 30%. They try right. and find ways about it. They'll do, use you as a pass-through, which they're called, where they'll mm -hmm. say they're using your name and they'll just put your name out there. They'll give you the money to pay the employees and so on and so forth. And I already had someone come to me that way. And I told them we're not a pass-through company. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to do the work. We want to yeah, do the work. Right, right. We want to self-perform. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we didn't get it, but I think I got their respect. Mm -hmm. And I think respect is very important because mm -hmm. once you start to circumvent yourself, well, then it's, it's going to be passed around the industry and in Philadelphia it's a very, very small mm -hmm. world. And you're that guy, oh, you, you can pass the wheel, you can pass, mm -hmm. you don't have to give them the mm -hmm. wheel. We're, we're going to be known as we're out there and doing the work, getting okay. it done, performing. Okay. Well, that that is a wonderful way to wrap up. Mm -hmm. um, because you do union work, you are really not necessarily someone that a consumer would, you know, hey, I need my house wired. No, let's say feel like spending a lot of money. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. you like to see lots and lots of zeros. Well, the reason I say that is because of the fact that... <laughs> Your union. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, my, my manpower yeah. is a third of a non-union contractor. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. of course, I can't do residential work. Mm -hmm. It's not beneficial to the, to the, to the customer. Mm -hmm. So we do pretty much commercial mm -hmm. work or multi-residential work mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But all of it is uh, unionized uh, labor. So what advice, and sort of in a 30-second time frame, would you give to someone who is your daughter's age, who mm -hmm. is thinking about getting into a trade-type business? Well, I've already given advice to my daughter who's 15, uh, not even in, in, in a trade business. Mm -hmm. My uh, story to her is to go out and be an entrepreneur okay. because you could do okay with working for someone else, but you can be rich if you are your own uh, have your own business. And you take risks, and it could probably not happen. But mm -hmm. um, to me having that entrepreneurial spirit, I had uncles that had restaurants. It seems like it's just been in my family. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an uncle who had a radio show once and so on and so forth. He has since passed some time ago. Uh, I had an uncle moved out to New Mexico with nothing, started mm -hmm. a flooring business and started doing floors for celebrities and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So it's kind of like in my blood. Okay. And I want to pass that on to my daughter. I uh, okay. tried it with my son, my only son. <laughs> uh, he decided to stay with Pico. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> but uh, with my youngest daughter, because I'm a little older now, Mm -hmm. uh, things are a little slower. Mm -hmm. I have time to talk to her even more. Excellent. And mine to her is, of course, go get your education, get your right. master's, your JD or whatever you want it to be. And we had the conversation, well, Dad, what should I do? Because <laughs> I don't want to be an electrician. I said, well, you love to write. She won an award 
uh, for writing a story when she was like seven years old, a lot of people from the city. So I said, why don't you major mm -hmm. in law, minor okay. in journalism? Okay. You know, because she also likes uh, civics. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, after all that is said and done, you go out here in the working world for a little while and find something and call it your own. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. James, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. I love your energy. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, an electrical uh, analogy or meta metaphor. A lightning so, bolt. Okay, lightning bolt. Yes, you, you are.